2 Corinthians chapter 10. Amen. We've been talking about the weapons of our warfare. Amen. How many know the weapons that we're fighting with, amen, are weapons that are not carnal, amen? They're not fleshly, but they are weapons, amen? What do you do with a weapon? You fight. You use it, amen? Is a weapon any good if you don't use it? What? It's just sitting there. How do I look? I got a, 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 a big, I call it my God stick. <laughs> And it's under my bed. How do I look? Somebody breaking in my house, and I got my God stick there, and I don't use it. Are, are y'all with me? Yeah, it looks about crazy. You say, well, you don't have a gun. No, I don't believe in guns. I don't carry guns. Amen? But you die by the sword. You live, you live by the sword. You die by the sword. But I have, a, I have a God stick. I have a couple of stuff. And the boys got stuff under their bed, too, because I've taught them as young men. If somebody come in our house, guess what? We defend it like Jesus is right there. Yeah. Are you with me? We will bring you into submission one way or the other. Amen? Amen. I don't understand how people become house be broken into and all the, all the men at home. No. Are y'all with me? Praise God. So, yes. So, guess what? But that weapon is no good for me if I don't use it. You got to use what's in your arsenal. Well, God has given us spiritual weapons in our arsenal. Amen? And so we're going to be learning about how to use our spiritual weapons. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you know, some of you look at me funny, but how many know a man is supposed to take care of his house? Amen. Amen. That's part of being a man of God. I'm supposed to protect my home. Ladies, I tell my, I tell my, I tell my daughters, I said, if you find a man that's running from a situation before he's <laughs> not trying to protect you, that's not the one. You don't have to pray about that because a good man is going to be ready to protect you. Amen. One of, my wife, one of the things my wife used to say when we remember when we first started dating, she says, I feel so safe when I'm around you. That's how she should feel. We were doing inner city ministry, and I was like, okay, watch out. Don't, you know, I was always looking out for her and me. I'm listening to you, but I'm watching everything. Maybe that's some of that Brooklyn in me. Amen? Are you with me? I'm praying with one eye open. Uh-huh. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I'm in the hood and they're shooting around me. I got to know what's going on. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So I had to use my weapons, but also I knew how to use my spiritual weapons. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We honor you for your word, God. We say this is the time that we set aside to get into your word and to grow thereby. Holy Spirit, you have a way of speaking to us like only you can. You have a way of isolating us in a room full of people and God penetrating our heart. Holy Spirit, will you do that today? We need you. We need a word from you, not from Howard, not from flesh, not from man, but from your word and your spirit. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Direct us and show us how to live. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's look at this. For though we walk and live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh. And using mere human weapons. Not just that stick under my bed. You need something deeper than that. Amen? What do you mean, Pastor? I'm binding the devil every night before I go to bed. I'm breaking every assignment off of our household in the name of Jesus. Amen? I'm pleading the blood of my children every time they wake up in the morning that God would cover them. Amen? Talk about weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of the flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Overthrow. What does it mean to overthrow something? To take over. To subdue. To bring into submission. And as much as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and I'll put in there, ra- what do know for reason? Rationalizations. Yeah. Have you ever reasoned yourself out of the will of God? Holy Spirit telling you to do something? He says, go witness to that person. I don't need to. They don't want, they don't look like they need to hear it right now. Reasoning. When are they going to ever look like they want to hear it? Are you with me? Reasoning. Sometimes I'm in line. I remember when I first started, God would tell me to pray for that person. But Lord, I really don't have time right now. We are in the middle of the grocery line. Reasonings. But I learned to do now when the Holy Spirit tells me to do it, I just do it. 
turn around and say, hey, can I pray for you right quick? And I don't even really wait for them to say no. I can say, yeah, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Are y'all with me? See, God may not use you that way, but that's how he uses me. Sometimes I can feel somebody's pain. I can feel their headache. And we'll say, now I'm the Holy Spirit saying, I'm letting you feel this so you can, so, so you can step out in faith. You wonder how I'm so bold when I'm in here. I'm bold when I'm out here. I learned how to be bold in here, out there. Are you with me? It's easy to be bold in here, but you be out there with some sinners that's going to tell you when you're wrong. Go, oh, I missed it. <laughs> that was the Lord. Are you with me? So you perfect the gift of the Spirit. The Bible says the signs and the wonders are for the unbelievers. And so the more you practice it out in the streets, guess what? In the church, when you hear God, you just, you, you've perfected hearing the voice of God. Amen? Amen? Let's keep going. Refute arguments, theories, reason, every proud and lofty thing that sets itself against the true knowledge of God. There's a lot of lofty, prideful things trying to raise itself against the knowledge of God right now. Man is trying to become an end in itself. We've opened a whole mess with this whole thing of transsexuality and LGBT and the lesbian gay community. And, then, and he, hey, we got to pray for our sister that's taking a stand. Do you see our sister's taking a stand in, the, in jail right now? In Kentucky, she's saying, you know what? When I, when I came in this elected office, I, was not, it, I, I didn't have to give marriage license to a homosexual. But now since I have to, take it out of my hands. Governor, but I will not put my name on it before God. And I'm looking at every, all the newscasts in different stations. Not all of them are telling the full story. She didn't say they can't get married. She said she just don't want her name on it. And all the governor has to do is just, with an executive order, change it like this, like some of the other counties have done. But in that state, he's refused to do that. Let's stand. She's in jail right now for what she believes. And people are trying to say she's being hateful. No, she's standing by her conviction. She has a right to believe what God's shown her. Just like you have a right to do what you want to do. Amen? But the world doesn't understand godly conviction. See, a conviction is something you're willing to die for. A preference is something that is fleeing in the moment. Are you with me? I think you should love people. But when you have a conviction to love people, you got to do them right. Are y'all with me? And how many know love is something I'm telling them the truth? Love is something I'm saying, you know what? The way you're living is not right. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, and we lead every thought and purpose away in captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, being in readiness to punish every insubordinate for his disobedience when your own submission and obedience as a church are fully secured and complete. Now, that's a mouthful right there. Amen? Now, let's look at that. Our weapons are carnal. Let's look at what that means. They're not human ingenuity, talent, wealth, ability, eloquence, charisma, personality. It has to go beyond that. That will only take you so far. How many know that? Because we're in a spiritual battle. See, now the world will tell you that that's all you need. Talent's all you need. Ingenuity. Ability. Well, no, no, no. I'm telling you something. When you have faith, I'm talking about a weapon. Now, that's the shield of faith. When you have faith, you'll find faith put you in places that you had no business being. People be looking at you, how did you get here? How you with me? I may have experienced that. Gotta get you someplace you won't even. I never forget when we went to Dallas. I remember we had a certain conference, we had uh, visiting this conference at, at Pastors Conference at Bishop Jake's church, and we were elders at the time, had become pastors. And I never, when we got there, my wife, anybody that's close to me know I hate late being late. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. And for whatever reason, we were late that day. I'm not blaming anybody. <laughs> But we were late, and I, we got there late, late, like, you know, like, because after a while, I was like, you know what, let's just, we're going to do this thing, let's just do it. It's like one of those late times, you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. So we may have got like 30, right, 30, at least 30 minutes late. I'm, you know, I'm, inwardly, I'm boiling, I'm like, uh, Lord, I want to just enjoy this conference, I want to get a good seat, it's packed, and pastors from all over the country were coming, and bishops and stuff, and went there, and we got there. And the usher, I said, can you, can, they, they, can. one person said, in the pack, another person said, you know, he saw me, he's like, come here. He said, glad you're here. And it took me right down to the second, the second row he took us? Was it front row or second row? Second row, put us right there. And the potter's, I was like, I, 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 I said, I may not be who you think I am. He said, that's all right, just stay there. 
aisle seat, you know, and I love an aisle seat because I'm tall. I'm on second row, and I'm right there, can touch the speaker, I can touch, and I'm seeing all these people around that I see on the right there, and, like, and that just kept happening every, every time we came there. I was like, Lord, I'm, the Lord said, I got you. And I put you in places that you, you know, but some people had to pay, hate saying, pay extra money to get where they were. I wasn't, <laughs> I didn't pay. And I was up with the people that I see on TV and on and on. And we were right there sitting with them. Amen. The singers that had to get up and sing and, and had to preach, they were sitting right there with us. And I was like, Lord, mm-hmm. you put us in places that we had no business being. I didn't have the money to pay to get, are y'all with me? And I've seen that happen even in the natural. Kind of put you in places that you have no business being. Amen. Amen. In the hotel, we're in San Diego. Somebody paid for our, our tickets. Another ministry paid for our tickets just to be, it was over $500. I didn't even want to look at the bill. I didn't want one of them bills. I, was like, I wonder how much they pay. I said, I don't even want to look because I don't even feel that guilty. I just want to stay thankful. Are y'all with me? Yes. Yeah. Amen. God will do. He'll do it. He'll put you in places you have no business being. Amen? Now, look at what a stronghold is. See, it's mighty through God to pulling down the strongholds. Strongholds are any destructive 